Hello, welcome to the Travel Leader Podcast. Today I'm here with Anna Connolly, and I'm really excited to talk to her about leadership in the travel industry. Welcome. Thanks for being on my show. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you for having me and, and the opportunity to be here with you. Great. So can you tell us first a little bit about yourself and um, what your position is in the travel industry? Certainly, yes. A little bit about myself. I'm, I'm original from Panama. Um, that's where I originated from. Um, it's funny because my, uh, my background, it's all hospitality. So I probably have like 20 plus years on this industry just because um, in Panama, tourism or hospitality is actually the their income of, for the country. So it's a relative small country and, you know, you naturally go into uh, being, you know, hospitable. So I started my career there in some resorts where I started to uh, uh, be a tour guy in the Panama Canal. I actually uh, work as a front desk agent in different resorts, Rainforest Resort. And I started to, you know, I learned English and continue my career and fell in love with hospitality, right? That's when I actually went to school, um, went to university and, and, and took a degree in tourism and hospitality administration, uh, continued to grow. And in 2009, that's when I actually moved here to uh, Boston. That's where um, I'm currently living at. And my husband's actually from here. That's how I, I end up here. And I um, continued to work in the hospitality. I started with the Sonista Hotel Collections, uh, working at the front desk, working at the call center, reservations, and worked my way, my way up all the way to um, be um, a leader in the revenue side of it. Um, I, when I moved here to Boston, I, I went back to school um, here in Boston to take a master's degree um, in management business to kind of give me a different perspective of, you know, how it's um, the business side of it. That's when I, I, I started to um, have more um, curiosity about, you know, how the hotels work. So that's, that since, you know, 2013, they, um, I started to work in, in revenue uh, and work my way up to from revenue manager to director of revenue, then complex to multiple hotels, different franchise, um, with the Corporation of Hilton and um, now currently with um, doing revenue management, but for um, um, cruise and um, the lots tours um, company. So um, currently my, my title is Senior Director of Revenue Management um, and I'm being holding that title for, for multiple years in different capacities um, and being a, a, a leader in the hotel industry uh, for quite some time now, about nine or 10 years. <laughs> so. Wow. Wow. What, what a past history. I hadn't realized that you had actually started in hospitality in Panama. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I started naturally. It's, uh, it was in the rainforest and, you know, showing uh, the tours, all, uh, the, the tourists, everything about the, the monkeys and everything around, you know, so very much yeah. it felt my, as my passion. <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic. So if you could think back to that time at the beginning of your career and where you are now, what's the impact that you want to have on the hospitality industry? I think um, um, when I look back I, in, in, you know, it's and then relook at the purpose of why I started, you know, of the why I, I enter hospitality, it's I, I want, I feel like everybody has the opportunity to belong to everywhere. So when you visit a country, it's because you're curious, you know, if it's not business, if you're for leisure, I feel like we all um, have the opportunity to belong to anywhere. And then in order for you to do that, you know, traveling, it's the way you uh, enrich yourself. You, you get to see the world and um, learn about all their cultures. And that I think is essence to the, um, to your human core to know, um, you know, it's it, travel is, is it's knowledge. Um, it's the only thing you will spend money that you will gain something back from it. So mm -hmm. in, in the sense of like, it's a, it's the only expense that, you know, you, you actually gain knowledge. It's like a university that you pay, right. When you travel anywhere in the world. So, um, yeah. 
it's um when I look at the impact, it's the you as a lead as a as a in tourism and, and you need to be on, on in, in that passion for feeling the other person hospitable, making that person feel welcome wherever you are. Um, the impact it's that you learn. That's that's absolutely what I look at my children nowadays and I say, you know, what I'm working towards is to make a positive impact for people to to know that hey, you are welcome wherever you go. Um, you know, you you belong here as well. You're not a stranger. So that's that's the impact that I look and 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 when I you know that's the way I look for my children to to always have that in mind whenever you know, when I think of hospitality and that's what I want to project to everybody. So, <laughs> wow, that is deep. Yeah. So that's so true. You know, you're, you're, when you're traveling places, um, there's such a, you know, what I hear you saying is there's such a big return on that investment that you're making and what you're learning along the way. Um, and it sounds like you want to contribute to that to people's adventure and their experience of travel um and i love that deeper purpose that you're connected to with making people feel like they belong no matter where they are that's pretty powerful stuff that's yes, awesome thank you <laughs> um so if someone else were to describe you as a leader someone on your team or someone you've worked for what do you think that they would say about you you know, it's that's um that's very interesting. I feel like if you ask somebody now, um, me as a leader compared to ten years ago, it probably would be a different leader um, than you know I have grown through and learned and evolved. But um, I think right now, with somebody that works near me, um, could say that I'm a very patient uh, leader. Um, although my children would not agree with that statement. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they would be like, no, mom, that's not who you are. But um, but I think it would be a, a patient and very collaborative. Um, um, with the mindset that we're stronger together than 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 alone. Uh, and then we make a difference if we if we work as a team and as a group. You know, it's it's a it's a it's a mindset you have to have and kind of cultivate and grow through that. Um, because I want to say that 10 years ago, I probably believe I could do it just myself. You know, it was very, um, cultural to, you know, the way, um, I was growing into seeing all their work environments, the mindset, you know, it's, um, the, the way it's like, uh, you know, the boss is the one that it needs to, um, it really is the one that it's going to put, um, uh, be the teacher has with a ruler here to say, you know, this is the way it is, and nobody can have an opinion, nobody has any uh, um, any further input. So it was the mindset, right? It's like how the stereotype of things was on my head, right? Like that's yeah. where I grew up. So you have to actually work a little bit towards to, you know, as you're growing as a leader, um, maybe that's what I projected at the beginning. Maybe no, the way the best the best approach and probably people will be like, why, uh, why you think you like a ruler or like uh, mm -hmm. uh, leading by, by uh, you think you have the power and then this is the way and that's it, you know? So, mm -hmm. and thankfully at that time of learning, I was, you know, I, I wasn't, you know, a director or such, but, you know, I was still leading and learning, right? So mm -hmm. I think um, back in the day, would it be different 10 years ago as I am today? I think somebody around me will say, um, you know, she's very collaborative. She's willing to go the extra mile. She's willing to roll her sleeve and just work with us, you know, um, open, really open for questions, open door policy. Um, we work as a team and we go through together as a team, you know, that that's the way I feel like, um, uh, uh, people would describe me now as a leader. Yeah. I really tend to feel, um, you know, try to motivate people. I'm always coming to the office joking with something or when I, when I work in my periods is previous experience I'm always bring a story you know to kind of break the ice because everybody comes you know with different moods or different you know it's it's a uh, different feelings different you know stories background the weekend so I always try to make it a little bit personal in that sense yeah. um so that's so very I, collaborative <laughs> I love what you say I think that's so true that leadership is an evolution and nobody 
gets it right from day one. And, you know, we all start somewhere and, you know, it takes time and experience to develop those skills. Um, and it sounds like collaboration, just from what you, you just said too, collaboration for you is also about personal connection and making connection um, with the people that you work with to be more Absolutely. successful. Absolutely. That's, yeah. that's on point. <laughs> I yeah. think, it, I think it makes us stronger when we, when you show them that, you know, you want to help. So. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so going back again, you know, and, you know, we we're talking about evolution and your past and where you are now, was there a moment when you knew you were a leader and what was that? Yeah. You know, it's, it's funny. I, I actually never, realize it um, until recently I was questioning myself uh, because I, I recently started um, teaching in Boston University. I, I teach a master's degree uh, for uh, the hospitality um, um, a faculty. I do teach a class for revenue management, advanced revenue management. And when I finished this past semester, I, I started in January, um, the start of the semester, very nervous. I'm like, how am I going to do this? Standing in front of the 33 students, all from different backgrounds internationally. Um, and then when I completed that, um, I'm all the way to May. I look back and I'm like, I, I'm thinking to myself, it was like, um, it, when, when the students started reaching to me and, and saying, thank you, you know, uh, professor for this, I'm actually applying this and doing that. I was like, wow, that, that really was a moment. I'm like, looking Looking back, I was like, when, when did I realize or when did I thought that I was a leader? So then I started thinking when, uh, when I was growing up back in my village, home country, um, in a small town in the, in the city, Panama City, um, playing like it was very um, normal to have like the family all living around houses like next to each other. They were family and I grew up with a lot of cousins. They were around my age, younger than me or older than me, but a lot of a lot of family. So funny that uh, my mom uh, sent me a picture because we were trying to gather some information for um, a video that we were having uh, a, a home that I um, was on TV for for a report about my life. Um, then in this like finding picture, she sends me one that I am I am standing right in the back of a very uh, dirty feel um pretending to be a teacher I have all of my <laughs> little cousins like six or seven of them sitting in a line and I'm with a rule going and talking and I'm like oh my god I was so bossy oh, <laughs> and now I like thinking to myself like that maybe that's I, I always have the leader in, in me I just never probably realized it or maybe I didn't know how to channel or shape it in different ways you know and I didn't have any coaching uh, but it was just my personality always be in the center and leading even when I travel with my family or travel with um, my parents I'm always like um, the one that I look like a chaperone I'm the one with like the flag <laughs> and then hey this is the way we're gonna go what do you guys think about this this and that and it's like it's always been on me and then my son will always say like you're so bossy mom but it's like yeah. it's probably <laughs> me trying to get everything in order everything aligned um it's just who I am and and I think that's that's when yeah. um you know I started to to like make a like analyze my my life and looking a little bit back and um but but yes I I think it started once I I realized how like business work because like, that was that was very new to me and I, I only knew the service part of it but when I started to learn the, the business side of it it was eye-opening so my personality then match with you know learning the business side so I think that was when everything took off from there and yeah. then evolving from there <laughs> yeah that's so interesting that you know I think it's a reflection of how we often see ourselves and we're a little bit blind to things that have always been there and it's so um, fascinating that, you know, it was really, really recently when you received that, you know, feedback from your students um, about, you know, that that's when you felt like a leader and really it was there from such a young age. 
Right. Um, that's, <laughs> you know, I, I think that's probably more common. I actually heard a friend tell me this past weekend, a similar story about her being at a family gathering and she was teaching them ballet. And yeah. she, the story was very, very <laughs> similar. So I wonder if that's going to emerge as a theme um, for the leaders I, I talk about. <laughs> That's too, and I'm sure I did that when I was a kid, like probably lining up the stuffed animals, you know, and telling them, <laughs> telling them all what to do for sure. Uh, yeah, that's, that's great. Funny. I love it. Um, so speaking of Panama, I'm, um, you actually, we talked recently and you talked about how you were interviewed by a news station in Panama about your trial, your journey in leadership and, and your career. What was that like? Wow. It's, it was very moving. I actually, um, so when they, when they, when they reached out to me that we were going to, they were going to, they, they really love my story um, because the, the show is actually, um, they have a segment of the news that it's called people who, and it's Spanish is gente que inspira, but in, but in translates to English to like, inspire people like people who is inspire us or something like that um or something along the line so they usually have a little segment where they, they show people the you know their journey their their pers like perseverance more than anything that you know kind of to show people that no matter the adversities you go through you can always you know go through your goals so the story about me was because um the i am from a town there is very um it's a village, uh, it's in the city, but it's very, um, I would call it like, it's, it's, it's segmented but as a ghetto or probably a very poor neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and the story is very much because how this person that came from a public school, public high school, they, um, they where Panama is having a lot of uh, trouble with the education part of it you know, for the public area, the public sector, which they have a lot of, you know, socioeconomic travels in that sense, like she, you know, where, where the circle but will be that, you know, people don't go to study or, you know, they study and then just don't break that cycle of, you know, um, mm -hmm. no, no um, getting ahead of themselves to, right. to become a better professional or such or some of the, I, I don't want to say everybody, right, but I'm, yeah. I'm saying that the, the story was focused on this person coming out of that town is specifically because my parents, none of my parents uh, graduated from university. Um, and even my great grandmother uh, didn't know how to read. So, wow. you know, to come from, um, from that background to go and teach to Boston University, a prestige university, it was like the focus of the story. You know, how um, when she moved, like, they were like how she moved and then continued to study and then become a professional and continuous progress to um, make it to teach uh, in a master level. So that was the focus of the story, you know, showing um, my more of my um, my adversity because uh, yeah. they they show how like I needed to wake up three in the morning to take a bus that would take me two hours to get to the um, wow. where I used to work and then go to school and then after school trying to get English courses at night in order to learn English you know yeah. it, it's like showing that whole adversity it was very much to show the the woman uh, in general you could study you can you could um, they were trying to show a little bit of like cultural differences because uh, it's very cultural in Panama. The women stay home. The ones that you know um, it had the children to mm -hmm. uh, it's the ones that stay home with the children. The dad goes to work, which is nothing wrong with it at all. Mm -hmm. it, it's just they was trying to show a perspective that you know you can go to you can go to school and you can you can get a degree and you can make your dreams. So that mm -hmm. was the purpose of the whole um, yeah. segment of the TV and I to tell you my dad was on tears you know for mm. a dad that when yeah. he saw it he couldn't contain himself you know like he never went to take a degree and, and when that happened it was so such a proud moment for him for my mom which they interview as well it was very touched they, they were they were they couldn't you know believe and they always 
um, my mom, like she mentioned on the on the video or the interview, she, they they um, interview uh, how it was to see me grow to mm -hmm. the professional I am. And her words were like, you know, it was always on her. She always wanted it to study because she always knew there was something better and there was something bigger and better. So um, I think that, that that saying from my mom, you know, she she was uh, saying like, she's always telling me, mom, you still can, you still can go back to school and those kind of comments, yeah. you know, that's what I, I'm, and, and that's in my personality. I usually, I, I, everybody that's around me could tell you, my friends, like I'm always pushing them to do better, but I think yeah. you could do it. I mean, you, you're great. Why don't you just continue this? And, and always encouraging to people to be their better, you know, professional and personally. So I, I, I push my kids too and and um it's just in me it's on my essence so um and I just continue you know pushing myself internally to to do better every day as well <laughs> so. yeah I mean I think there's there's so much that m so many leaders um like me can learn from that and and other people in in our industry and in the professional world it actually it relates to this news article I saw recently that um, you know, as as an immigrant, you are often facing a lot of adversity for advancement, and and as your you explain in your story, um, which was part of you know this news news story as well. Um, so you know, what do you think has been you know the benefits of that adversity? for you in your leadership? Absolutely. I I think um, it gives me a different perspective. Um, having that adversity, it, it makes me appreciate things more. I feel that um, if I, knowing my personality, if I, if I didn't go through those adversities, I probably wouldn't be, um, has, a, has a well-grounded push forward person, I'll say. You know, um, I, I the adversities I saw my parents to go through, mm -hmm. you know, um, where places the water, um, you needed to wake up so early so you could catch the water, otherwise you will have water all day, you know, that kind of situations. It kind of builds that strain on you that, you know, I want to do better for them. I want to do yeah. better for my family. And, you know, and it grows into, um, I want to do better for my kids. Um, and I also, you know, I having my kids here in Boston now, I, I, I try to travel as often as I can to Panama so they understand and see, hey, this is how mom grew up. So they could appreciate by seeing. That's why I feel like traveling is so important because you see how older ones leave and then you learn mm -hmm. from it. Um, and that's, that's when, uh, you know, I want them to see that, hey, you, I'm able to provide you everything here. But I want you to understand where where that sacrifices come from, and the sacrifices the person be, be, before me, my mom, my great grandmother, and all the sacrifices. So you know, it's kind of like a a leap race that you know you carry over and carry over your ancestors and your and your you know the sacrifices of others. And I I'm, I come very uh, conscious to appreciate that. Um, seeing those adversities I appreciate you know the food better I appreciate you know the money that we spend better um you know I I don't spend a little things that I don't think I'm going to use later you know it's because it, that's that's how I was raised right so you get mm -hmm. something too comfortable to really uh see you know like appreciate the little things that you have in an everyday day so um that yeah. that that helped me you know help shape to to see a different perspective and to always have patient and understand others uh, because they might have been going through something that I, I have no idea of, you know? So I, I, that's what it helped me try not to judge people. I think that I learned that through, through the way. And, and that's my mom always say, you always have an excuse for the people, for everybody. Like you always have, um, you know, I leave it, I leave the benefit of the doubt because I'm, I'm, that's why I probably am so patient because I, 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 I don't know all the full pictures. So I think, Sometimes I know certain things, but, you know, I, I don't know everybody's background. So I try to be very conscious of that and, and understands people background and, and sacrifices because I myself went through it as well, you know, yeah. so. <laughs> yeah. 
So it's like success and adversity are two sides of the same coin. And that, you know, that adversity it has just taught you this appreciation for, you know, not taking for granted what you have Absolutely. and, um, and just really, uh, you know, that appreciation, you know, you know how difficult it can be. And you don't want to, you know, you want to advance and move forward from that. Um, so that's a real driver for your success. It was a, be a very, a very much a driver. You know, I, I'm an unconscious, you know, everybody is not the same. You know, if I think of uh, uh, other situations, I see in friends or family from Panama, like the, the adversities they go through, you know, it, it breaks me. Sometimes it breaks me. And I, some, I sometimes wonder, like, um, if this happened to me, I, would I be able to stand up to uh, and move and carry on forward, you know, mm -hmm. um, seeing some friends and lose their, their, their mom and parents earlier, mm -hmm. would I, like, if I didn't have my parents that support, mm -hmm. would I be able to, to move forward as a leader, like yeah. being as strong as I am, you know, it really depends on the person because some others wouldn't know, be able to, to do that. Right. And I, I think I would, that would be one of, you know, um, I would be one of those persons, but I am grateful that my parents um, were a good driver and pusher to that, you know, to help, you know, so parents have a very, very strong play role on that. So, yeah, you make, you make a really good point that, you know, to make that leap from adversity to success over time, that your support system is a really key factor. Absolutely. For sure. Whether okay. that's, I mean, in your case, it was, you know, I don't know, I think in a lot of people's cases, it's parents, you know, who Sorry. are important influence, but mm -hmm. it can also be, you know, friends and other family members and things like that, yeah. for sure. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so when is a moment that you have underestimated yourself? I think all the time. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's funny because, you know, it's, um, it's a constant fight I have to myself, you know, and it maybe is because I don't think I'm deserving of things. Sometimes I'm like, oh, wow. Like, and then I doubled up myself. Um, I think, I think it's, um, it's a constant battle I have internally, like mm -hmm. feeling sometimes that I don't, um, it, for example, I'll, I'll give you a, a perfect example. So when I was contacted to teach in, in Boston University, me being that I was like, I, I, I was, I was very, I, I was, I was um, surprised, but at the same time, I was like, really me? You want me? To <laughs> um, sort of, you know, it, it took me a few months to wrap my hair around that, even though, you know, my husband was saying like, Anna, you've been in the industry for so long. Why are you mm -hmm. self-doubting yourself or underestimate yourself? You yeah. have all the knowledge. What are you talking about? So it's like uh, comes in um, thinking. I'm like, are you sure you want me to teach? I'm like, <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> like me. Yeah. And uh, it's like it took me a few months to wrap my head my head around it. And and I I usually when I'm out of my comfort zone, then that's when I start like I struggle a little bit. But then I push myself forward and and build the confidence that sometimes I project some. Uh, multiple people usually say, wow, you're very confident. I'm like, that is so funny that I project that because yeah. I am, don't feel myself. I am that confident. <laughs> mm -hmm. But um, it, it's like you push yourself and goes through this internal battle, internal uh, learning because I'm out of my comfort zone and then thinking I know the servant of things. And um, then I push forward, right? And then now when I look back after I finish that semester, and, and also I have great help from the deans, colleagues that helped me through it, people that, um, the colleagues that teach in the past to help me with some material the same way, you know, I put some other stuff together. So that collaboration, that support and encouragement, then it makes you, you know, build a little bit more of that confidence. My husband going and rooting on my back, go ahead, you can. Wow. I'm like, are you sure I could do this? <laughs> um, you know, I'm like, look at my broken English. How can I teach yeah. this kids? You know, it's a whole... <laughs> Yeah. it's a whole thing that it has um you know it's a constant battle for myself but I think it's all my personality I'm always 
underestimate myself, but then it, I push forward and, and I get out of my comfort zone and, and, and pull through and build confidence and, and empower through. So <laughs> that Anna, I think is uh, the sign of a true leader is when you can push through, even in those feelings of self doubt, um, because we all have them, right? You know, every one of us um, has experienced something like you've experienced where, um, you know, you just don't expect that you have the credentials to to take that next step, but somebody else sees it in you. Yes, um, absolutely. You're so right. <laughs> so, yeah, so I think pushing through uh, as you have done, um, yeah, that's real leadership. That's real self-leadership for sure. Thank you. Yeah. starts in between right <laughs> yeah yeah um so you know one of the things I think as leaders that we deal with a lot is there's so many things we're juggling so many balls and you know there's we're being asked a lot to be on a committee or to head up a different initiative what is the trigger for you to say yes to something I, I need to have my heart. Uh, it needs to it needs to really motivate me. Um, I mean, if it's if it's for the common for the common of making the business better, you know, if it's a project given, you know, I I in order for me to sell it to my team or 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 sell it to to the stakeholders because sometimes it's vice versa. Like if if the brand was giving me an instruction and I have to sell it to the stakeholders on how we're gonna do new things. I need to. I need to also first be convinced. You know, I, I need to have a um, motivation on it. The, the same has of as it was mm -hmm. when um, when I when I teach. You know, it was it was first idea prompted to me, and I have self doubt. But I, but then then when I realized the end goal that it was to give back to the hospitality community, to give back to the many uh, women the seats on the seats on those seats and and the reason why I say that because in the in the industry the high positions and even on the where you teach is, it's uh it's 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 male who teaches mm -hmm. the, the classes which is there's nothing wrong with it but when you see the seats it's majority of them are women there are sitting yeah. so giving that projection to be able to give those girls um they, they they see my background and seeing how um, I'm all the way to become a, a senior director of revenue. You know, it gives them that hope and it actually gives them that um, uh, confidence to approach me and, and confidence to ask questions and say, hey, I, I want to be a leader like she is. She was able to become a, you know, a senior director and such. So, so representation for sure. Um, so once I saw that, then they motivate me, you know, I'm going to, uh -huh. I'm going to push through and um, I'm going to do it. And why? Because I saw that end goal that it's going to benefit so many people and it has to motivate me. And that's, that's what I, I did it. So um, I think, I think anything, any project that I would take, it, it needs to be sale um, myself. I got to sell it to myself first to mm. see what, what the purpose is and then to sell it to my team in the same way. Yeah. Uh, when it's, you know, revenue related and even if it's, you know, um, human capital related, it's the same way. You know, it's uh, if we need to do an adjustment, we, we need to be able to explain um, why the revenues are going to change and, and also communicate to the stakeholders. Right. So so you have to sell the idea. So you have to become, you know, uh, actually a, a, a salesperson in every level. Right. When, when you're going to deliver or take some um take projects right so yeah it needs to make sense in between like it needs to make sense and it has to have a purpose and an end goal for me to yeah. then take that project for sure yeah so what I'm understanding is your your decision making process and thought process on you know choosing whether it's you know something very much like related to your bigger life purpose of giving back to women in hospitality um or even something as a, you know, making a decision about a specific project or a, you know, decision that you're going to make in your work, in your daily work, right. that it's about aligning that with 
your purpose as a person or yes. your goals as an organization. Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. I yeah. think that's, that's, um, that's a, that that's an important process to go through when making those decisions for sure. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. It needs to make sense. Like yeah. my six year old would say, mommy, it doesn't make sense. Why are we going yeah. there? <laughs> <laughs> They're very wise. Those six year olds. <laughs> My children are always teaching me stuff. So I'm trying to get better at listening to them instead of just, you know, yelling at them. Yes, agree <laughs> for sure. So, uh, so what I'm doing, you know, with the, the participants of this podcast is I see this as an opportunity for us to see other leaders in the industry as our personal board of advisors and we're throwing out, you know, in, in each podcast recording, what is a challenge that you're dealing with right now? Um, and if you had the advice from this board of advisors, you know, what would you be looking for, for advice from them? I think, I think uh, there would be so many topics I could probably like, oh, be like, oh, I need help. I wish I had people to help me in this, but um. I think right now the the biggest um, challenge is is retention for for labor. I think that's something. Uh, what would be the best way to to uh, retain my talent when when company wise, you know, might not be the best on benefits compared to other companies, right? Mm -hmm. Like, how can I make them feel that this is a good spot? So that's like I probably if I would want to advise to see how other companies do it, you know, um, because in the hospitality with the pandemic, obviously it was a little, um, you know, turnover. And then um, obviously people that never came back to the industry and move on to different stuff. So, you know, how, how did I, how did I re um, communicate those like goals and purpose for people to to motivate them to stay right to yeah. to see the purpose of serving um in hotels when there's so many you know comforts of working from home and 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 yeah. you know different uh, alternatives um you know i i i'm a firm believer that eventually that's going to sort of level um and everything's going to you know um come to uh um, back to normal in certain ways, but I don't. At the same time, you know, it's a uh, we're in a generation that it's constantly evolving, you know, in different uh, mindsets and different um, experiences, and and people value different uh, things nowadays. That it's a uh, you know what what is it the reconnection after after the um, COVID? You know what people are constantly finding things that make sense and then and mm -hmm. redefine with their purpose. So. You know, I don't know uh, specifically how to keep them motivated on the hospitality industry, mm -hmm. especially, you know, when you're working in hotels as a front desk, you know, housekeeper, that that would have feel like I would have loved to have some advice. Yeah. <laughs> so I like, yeah, I think, you know, we're all dealing for sure. I mean, I'm a hotel owner, too, and that, you know, retention topic is is so important and so it's still pervasive um and being able to attract and and retain staffing i but i like how you clarified your question to you know what's the value how do you determine your value proposition for your particular business in order to be able to specifically retain staff right or attract them actually i'm sure um, and that's, that's, you know, you know, that's, that is a very um, important, you know, distinction of what is really at the crux of part of our, you know, challenge in the industry Excellent. right now, you know, if we lost, we lost a lot of people after during and after COVID and so there's a lot of having to convince people to come back and what that's is good. that value proposition that's going to get them to come back. So that's Absolutely. a great question. So I'm going <laughs> to throw that out to a future participant and I'm going to, I'm going to, yeah, I'll get back to you. I'll connect you with that answer um, when I find Thank it. You. 
And, <laughs> you know, in the same vein, connecting back to one of our, our previous podcasts, uh, when our, our participant, Leah, I think, I believe she asked about one of her struggles is juggling priorities. And how do you, you know, how do you make a decision on what to do next? Can you talk about a little bit about your process and how you decide what is a priority and, and what you're going to pursue? Absolutely. Um, depending on where, you know, we, we constantly juggling, um, you know, home, kids, you know, businesses, um, you know, the tasks. So Something I learned, you know, I, every day I make, uh, besides, you know, the calendar that it has all the, the information and everything per day and, and how many meetings and how many tasks. Sometimes I do in a daily base. Um, it's just put on a sticky note to myself, just which one is the most important thing to get done today. Um, mm -hmm. It could be, you know, it's, um, it could be a, a home thing or like, you know, I can't miss my son's, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, soccer game. So depending of, you know, um, I value and I recheck on my calendar and, and say, what what is the most important thing to get done today that it will not allow me to continue the next day, mm -hmm. right? So um, I plan my agenda and, and my schedule very much in advance, but, you know, when it's tasks at work, obviously, you know, we have fire drills and such that we need to have done. And that will come right at the top of that sticky note when things are, you know, and on fire, I need to right. literally, you know, put out, get the, fire. Fire, <laughs> that light, put out the fire, <laughs> then that, you know, that goes in the priority. But if it's things that are in a routine, but there's two tasks, three tasks, you know, I try to prioritize what's most important, what's the time, you know, what is the, uh, the one that it's not going to allow me to continue? So I make a list. Um, sometimes if I have chance on the weekend, then I try to tackle some of that, like whenever I, I have time, because most of the times I try to spend it with the family and spend mm -hmm. family quality time. But if I'm just like at night and sitting with a glass of wine or something, I try to tackle what, what I can, you know, once I prepare the food for the week and everything ready for lunches and, you know, yeah. so that's, that's, um, I try to just do what is not going to allow me to continue the next day. So, yeah. you know, and, and, and that's, that's in an organizational bar, no meaning that, you know, I, I left something and, and yesterday and I didn't finish it and I'm just procrastinating and I'm just going to go fast the next day and be like, Oh, what is it that I, I, I need to do before tomorrow? But no, it's um, I literally just put the task and two weeks needs to be done. Then I, I do, put in my sticky note, this is what absolutely needs to be done today. If, even if it only take me an yeah. hour, it just need two hours. So that's, that's something like, that helps me just having yeah. the sticky note. <laughs> yeah, that's a great strategy because the, the to-do list is never done, right? Never it, done. <laughs> it just, we think it's done and then it just adds 10. We just add 10 more to it. So, you know, we could work a hundred hours in a day if there were a hundred hours. So that's a yes. really important way to determine how are you going to get through each day so that you can actually go home. Absolutely. Pick the one, My mom. Th <laughs> pick the one thing. And, you the know, there's a thing. great book actually called The oh, One really? Thing. Um, I, highly, <laughs> okay. I highly recommend it because it's it's along oh, wow. the lines of using that strategy um, oh, but you great. figured that out without the book. So. <laughs> I, that's, I, you know, it's, a, and I think it's more because of my mom's quote. My mom always tells me one thing at a time. I can no multitask yeah. one thing at a time. I'm like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> one thing at a time, mom, I, I get it. <laughs> oh, we learn so much from our, our parents for sure. Yes. That's for sure. Um, so to, before we close today, I wanted to ask you a bit going to, you know, your main industry that you're working in the cruise industry. I saw this article this morning about that there's this now this trend of people that can basically sell their house and live on a cruise ship oh, all, wow. the to all the time and travel the world. Um, what, you know, what do you think about that as someone working in the sh cruise industry? You know, I, I actually read that two days ago. Um, I was like, wow, really? You know, I, 
my my thought is that you know people like after after COVID, people has reshaped the values. You know, see what's important, what's not. Um, so I think it's similar to what the short rentals you know are experiencing. People are like going for ninety days in the short rental. Um, you know, the same has now people are living in the cruise. Um, I think it's a steady. Um, I think it's some. It has some profit. It has some input on it. You know, an investment because somebody that's going to be in a long term. Um, you know, is it, if it's becoming a trend, then you're probably going to have to have some different strategies for, you know, um, because we tend to have discounts when it's like long term stay. But now, if everybody's or more people are doing long term stay, you might lose on that. Uh, kind of peak days and seasons that you might have if somebody's staying for that long. So you might have yeah. to adapt and reshape your your strategies when it's a cruise or short rentals or hotels um, to to actually you know be maybe uh, more attractive to um, that po- that population with that trend. Uh, but I feel I'm I'm the I'm a firm believer that we we need to adapt adapt to the times and adapt to we need to evolve with what uh, people's needs are yeah. so and that's the only way we're going to get all return on investments and i think it will be successful uh, and also you sometimes you don't have to probably worry about you know how am i going to fill this cabin or this hotel or or this space if somebody's staying long term it's a yeah. it's a it's an income in there right so it's probably just going to have to become more of a strategy at the time of you see that training often to to yeah. see and and uh, but I, I think that we we need to we need to evolve. We need to certainly go to the trends and see what's moving. You know, so uh, I personally wouldn't. I I if I was retired, I would love to do something like that. Maybe I'll go to Panama and live in an island yeah. with my kids. It and then sounds my really nice, right? <laughs> It sounds very different, right? But I don't know how long. <laughs> it's very that aspirational, <laughs> aspirational goals. You gotta have goals, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I, I I hear stories. I you know I have I have a friend that um the used to uh, she she retired early because she was able to do that and um she. Sorry, you were um, saying no, no, you're talking about your friend. No, that's fine. Yeah, my friend that she was able to retire early and then with all of her retiring and, and severance and everything when she decided to move uh, forward, she um I think she already had like uh, a, a yacht or a boat and then she saw her house and it's now her husband going through all, like her goal is going with this big yacht uh, and going through the cost, cost uh, all the way to the South America. So, you know, I'm like, wow, <laughs> but her husband selling the world. I'm like, wow, it's like a, a movie or Moana. I'm like, I'm wow. just like, wow, very aspirational. But yeah, every, you know, everybody have different purpose. They want to leave their life fully as, you know, they, yes. they want to focus on more work-life balance. And, and I feel like that that's okay. We just have to evolve to, you know, to to the new trends and, and we need to evolve with the industry and, and, and what the needs of the of the guests are now. Yeah. So. Well I think it says a lot about the, you know, and that's such a great place to to complete our call today, um, the value that travel has in people's lives, that it's so Absolutely. important to them that they're willing to give up their home and just be on the move all the time and to to be exploring the world um that's a yeah (laughs) that's a pretty powerful thing well (laughs) Anna thank you so much for being on the travel leader podcast this has been an awesome conversation and I look forward to staying in touch absolutely thank you Rachel for having me you're welcome (laughs) 